Hey everyone and welcome back to the vlog. If you are new here, my name is Sheena and I'm an illustrator and content creator based in New York City. So this is going to be a fairly chill and calm vlog, but we're still going to get some stuff done. So I promised you all a while ago that I would show you my process for reinforcing these acrylic keychains that I get from Sticker Mule. While I love them, unfortunately, the back is not coated. So as it rubs against people's keys and different elements, it rubs off the image on the front, which can lead to poor customer reviews. So I found a way to fix that. Now I use a nail file and this is going to be a new one. Try not to use the one that you use for yourself. And then some type of gel coat. It doesn't matter what brand it is. I use Gelish. And not to forget some type of UV light to cure the actual top coat. You're going to be just fine. Now I got this one from Amazon. I did invest because I use it on my own nails as well, but you know, buy the cheapest one you can find. And finally, I did try this alternative like UV resin on Amazon. I didn't like it, it didn't work. So I'm going to take this buffing tool, this nail file, and just buff lightly on the top layer of the image on the back. You don't wanna to buff too much the way you're taking the image off, just enough to kind of add a little bit of texture and roughness so that the top coat can adhere to it. Now, this part is not sped up because I really want to show you guys like how slowly I'm moving and really trying to be precise when it comes to just applying a thin, coat on top. I think in this stage, a lot of us want to rush and just put as much top coat as we can on there and just glide it all over. But I'm telling you from experience, from not only doing my own nails, but also doing quite a few of these keychains that you really have to just be patient and apply that thin layer of coat. You only need one of them, so there's no reason to rush this process. And then another thing you wanna make sure of is that you're not taking too long because it'll actually create this weird like bubbling effect around the edge of where you put the top coat and where the acrylic meets. So I hope that makes sense. Just try to go edge to edge, take your time, but also don't rush it and overuse the product. You want a thin, clean layer of top coat. Now, once you've got that done, set your UV light to a minute and 30 seconds and pop it in. Now, some lights do not have this like digital timer on there, so maybe you can time it yourself, but you wanna at least keep it in there for a minute. I do a little bit extra just to make sure that it is absolutely cured and dried. All right, so they are all done, they are cured, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull them out. And now the final step is to remove the last bit of sticky residue that the top coat leaves behind. Now I'm using this acetone from this brand, but you don't have to use acetone, just some sort of nail polish remover to just get that sticky residue type of layer removed. And then once you're done, you'll see it is nice and smooth and cured. It's going to feel like a cured resin, the same type of effect but in my opinion, a lot easier and straightforward. I just didn't like the way that other resin product worked. It was supposedly supposed to cure it in the sun. It didn't do that. So that's how I get them done and I hope that was helpful.
Okay, so as we wrap up packing orders, I wanted to show you all the new planner setup that I'm using. It is very much structured because I've just been super busy towards the end of 2021 leading into this year. And so I've simplified things quite a bit, um, but I wanted to show you all either way. So I picked up this planner from my local stationery shop. I believe it's made by a brand called Pocketo or Piketo. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, um, but as you can see, it has a monthly planner view, a weekly planner, and then towards the back, it has like a project planning template and I really like it. Now I do miss my old bullet journal days like when I used to have my habit trackers and things like that. I just haven't really had the time to do it from scratch. So if any of you have like a planner that is semi-structured but also a lot of free space to be creative, let me know what brand you all use because I'm still kind of in the market. I don't know how I feel about this one 100% but I still wanted to share it. So I wasn't sure about including this part, but I did want to be open with you all because you may be seeing a lot more of this side of my life um, in vlogs. But during the end of December through all of January, I actually took a pause, like a hiatus on everything, just to kind of reevaluate where I wanted to be with my career and my goals, um, not only financially, um, but as a creative. And I've realized that I have been very um, stuck for a long time and not really feeling accomplished and I know that sounds crazy because you're looking at the channel and the patreon and all of that stuff but a part of me has just kind of felt like um, not a hundred percent fulfilled and so I've taken this time to kind of tap back into all parts of me and all realities and one of those realities is that I came from a tech and IT background and there is so much of me that still misses that and unfortunately in the art space in the art world there isn't much space for IT work, you know, for engineering type of work. And so I don't want to be a website designer or anything like that, but I do miss the type of work that I used to do in IT. And so I've decided to kind of jump back into learning and being a student again. And I've been taking some IT courses and that's what you see me doing here. So I wanted to share that with you all. Um, I really enjoy note taking. As you can see, I have like a brain dump section because I can get sidetracked, but it's been really great. Now I want to wrap wrap up this discussion and also give you guys a little time lapse here, but I am trying to get away from this all or nothing mindset. Um, almost like you can only do one of something and nothing of anything else. And I think this has happened to me because I pivoted from a very technical corporate background into being a creative, into being an illustrator. And as soon as you choose to make this transition, it almost feels like the only type of rhetoric you're hearing is, you know, you have to grind, give it your all. There should be nothing else to distract you. And while in certain cases that is true, I feel like specifically for me, um, that isn't true. I don't think that I need to be a hundred percent an illustrator all the time and i think that because i have been doing that unfortunately it's caused me to almost fall out of love with it at times because it's all that i ever do so the enjoyment aspect of it is lost when it's your job it's your hobby it's your everything right so i'm currently reconsidering what my life could look like doing the art stuff as well but maybe incorporating a bit more it work and seeing what that looks like and if i could 
balance to two of them right now where I am in my life. So I wanted to share that with you all because it's not something that I can just exclude. And I also wanted to see if any of you were going through the same feelings and maybe we could lean on each other. So I hope you enjoyed the vlog. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.